In the last video, we talked about the delay effect and a lot of different things we can do with it. In today's episode, we'll follow the same direction as we will explore three effects that use a very similar process. We'll talk about flanger, chorus, and phaser effects. They are called modulation effects because they usually have one or several LFOs inducing movement in the sound. So let's begin with the flanger. So this is a sawtooth waveform alone. Now with a flanger but without the LFO. And now with the LFO. When a signal goes through a flanger, it is duplicated into two copies. One is played back as is, and the second is delayed slightly. It's generally a very small delay time, like below 15 milliseconds late compared to the dry signal. So up to now, it's really like a delay effect. These two signals are then layered, and this creates some phase cancellation and amplification. At some point, for some frequencies, the two waveforms will both have a positive value, or both negative values, so their values will be added and make the signal more powerful. And at other points, for other frequencies, one will be positive while the other will be negative, so they cancel each other out. As a result, some frequencies in the sound will be amplified, and other will be cancelled or attenuated. We can then trace a graph to show which frequencies are boosted or which one are cancelled, and if we do so, we get something like this. This is the same shape that a comb filter have, and that's why some comb filters have the name flanger attached to them. And because the second signal is uniformly delayed, these frequency cuts are uniformly spread out along the frequency spectrum. It follows a harmonic series. Then, if we move the delay time of the second signal, we move this harmonic series, so it's just like if we'd move the cutoff of a comb filter. On many flanger effects, you should also have a feedback parameter that sends the result of the effect back into itself, and that basically accentuates the effect of the filter. And on some flangers, you also have an option to choose the polarity, to create a feedback or a feedforward comb filter. You can check the episode about filters for more info on that. Now, the flanger effect is often associated with a sweeping sound, and that's because usually the delay time is controlled by an LFO that makes it move up and down. So the LFO will move the equivalent of this filter up and down, creating this sweeping effect. So to sum it up, on a flanger effect, you often have a delay time and a feedback parameter to basically set the position and the strength of the comb filter, and then you will have a rate and a depth knob which will define the speed of the LFO and how far it will move the delay time. Now let's hear a chorus effect. A chorus effect is very similar to a flanger effect. When a signal goes through a chorus effect, it is also duplicated. The first one is also played back as is, and the second one is also delayed, but generally it's delayed by a higher amount, between 20 and 50 milliseconds. Then, a chorus effect also generally has an LFO that modulates the delay time of the second signal, just like in a flanger. But unlike a flanger, modulating the delay time will also alter the pitch of the signal, just like with the delay effect when we right-click it and put it in re-pitch mode. Shortening the delay time will make the pitch higher, and making the delay time longer will make the pitch lower. So with the LFO, the pitch of the second signal will go up and down, just like a vibrato. So mixed with the dry signal, it makes a dissonance, and as any dissonance, that creates kind of a beating in the sound. If the effect is very drastic, it can make a straight-up wobbly dissonant sound, but with more subtle values, it is often perceived more as a rich, shimmering tone. In terms of frequency response, when we mix the delayed signal with a dry one, it also makes the effect of some kind of comb filter, but different than a flanger. It is also possible to have more than one copies of the original sound, to have several delays with different settings to accentuate the effect. Because usually there is no feedback control on a chorus. I mean, some of them do have feedback control, but it's not always there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
It's an interesting effect that gives the impression that the sound is played by more than one source, hence the name, chorus, and it is often used on vocals, pianos or guitars to add thickness or interest to the sound. So to sum it up, on a chorus effect, you would have a delay time parameter, just like on a flanger, and then you'd have a rate and an amount knob to control the speed of the LFO and how much it moves the pitch of the second voice. Also, some chorus effects are called stereo chorus. This stereo effect is achieved by delaying the left and the right channel differently with two different LFOs that have different speeds. So it will pitch shift the left and the right channel differently as well. Now let's see the phaser. Let's hear how it sounds. A phaser effect is also very similar to a flanger effect, but it's a bit more complex. The signal that enters the phaser is also duplicated, with one signal being played back as is and the other being processed. The processed signal is kind of delayed as well, but it's delayed differently than in a flanger effect. The signal goes through one or several filters that are called all-pass filters. An all-pass filter doesn't really cut any frequency. What it does is phase shifting the signal in a non-linear way. Basically, that means that it delays some frequencies in the sound differently than others. So you can have the bass frequencies delayed more than the higher frequencies, for example. So when you mix this signal with the dry signal, you still get some phase cancelling. You still get some kind of a comp filter effect. But compared to a flanger effect, a phaser would have less cuts, sometimes even just one. The frequency cuts do not necessarily follow a harmonic series. As a result, a phaser effect will sound less harsh than a flanger effect, because the effect is not tuned to a particular frequency, so it will sound less drastic. Actually, the less all-pass filters in your phaser, the softer the effect. And the more all-pass filters used in your phaser, the more frequency cuts you add. Some phasers even let you activate or deactivate these filters. They often refer to it as poles or stages. So on a phaser effect, you generally have a frequency knob and a feedback knob to move the series of cuts and their strength. And you'd also have an LFO with a rate and a depth parameter and that would modulate the frequency. So that can create a sweeping effect close to a flanger, but less harsh. Then you may have a pole or a stage parameter to use more or less filters in your phaser. So the thing to remember about the flanger, the chorus and the phaser is that they all use a short delay time to alter the sound and they all have an LFO to give it some movement and it is this LFO that gives them their status of modulation effect. Personally, in a sound design phase, I like to use them as static effects without using the LFO so I would turn its amount to zero. <laughs> I like the texture it gives, but on the opposite, you can use a very fast LFO. Past a certain rate, you can't really hear the oscillation of the LFO when it becomes some kind of a distortion. Just like in FM synthesis, where you oscillate the pitch of an oscillator so fast that it just becomes a distortion. Or you can simply use a normal or slow rate for the LFO to simply have motion in your sound. Another thing to keep in mind is that the result of these effects are the equivalent of adding a comp filter, which means subtractive synthesis. That means that this effect would work better on sounds with a rich harmonic content, or at least you will hear the effect more on sounds that have a lot of harmonics. So it can work well on sounds that are generated with FM synthesis or that has distortion on them, for example. And that will be all I have for you today, so if you like this video you can give it a like or share it to a friend, and please consider subscribing if you don't want to miss new videos like this one. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.